All right, so in the last video, we introduced exponential functions. Um, so we said we can define f of x as a to the x, where x is a real number. We do have this condition here that a has to be positive, right? We, we can't define exponential functions for a negative base because we know that we, we run into problems with things like square roots of negative numbers, right? Um, in, fa in fact, if a is negative, then the only values that are going to work for, for the exponent are going to be either integer exponents or rational exponents where the, where the denominator is odd, right? And things are in lowest terms. Uh, so, so you can't define exponential functions if the base is negative, but for any positive value of the base, you can make sense of this, right? Uh, here are, are a few of the graphs, right? So for a bigger than 1, you get something which kind of grows like this, right? And then they grow very rapidly. You probably hear this term exponential growth, right? Referring to something that grows very, very quickly, uh, gets very big, very fast. And that's because these exponential functions do indeed grow very big, very fast. They, so exponential functions grow faster than any of the other elementary functions that you're used to dealing with. Um, as the base gets bigger, the growth rate is faster, right, at the, uh, at the positive x end. At the negative x end, they tail off towards zero. So they get closer and closer and closer to zero, but they never quite reach it, right? Um, so, so the x-axis is a horizontal asymptote, but only on one side, right? So it's a horizontal asymptote as x goes towards minus infinity, if you like. Okay? If, um, if a is between 0 and 1, then you get this decreasing function rather than an increasing function, right? So it's big for negative values of x, and then it, it shrinks down towards 0. <coughs> of course, you could also put a equal to 1, but that's not very interesting because 1 to any power is, is just 1. Um, and so you, in fact, have a constant function. So we're not so interested in that. Um, one of the ones that's, that's not pictured, which is the most common exponential function, is the natural exponential. And that kind of sits somewhere in here. OK. So here is y equals e to the x. Um, so this e is, is Euler's number. Um, and it's, it's around 2.7, okay? Um, it's, it's an irrational number. In fact, it's what's called a transcendental number, just like pi. Um, so it's, um, you know, it's, it's a, in some sense, a complicated number, uh, in, in some sense, a simple number. It turns out that for a lot of reasons, the natural exponential, especially from the point of view of calculus, is, is, is the best exponential function to work with. E is the simplest base. Uh, despite the fact that you know it's an irrational number, um, it's a simple base to work with. We'll see that derivatives and integrals uh, working with base e are much, much, much simpler than using base 2 or base 10 or one of the other log bases that you might have worked with in high school. OK, uh, so properties. What can we say about exponential functions? Well, uh, for any base, um, the domain of my exponential function is, is all real numbers. So they're, they're defined for every possible value of x. Right? Um, we saw that for, for a bigger than 1, we can say a couple of things. We can say that uh, as x gets big, uh, f of x gets big too. We can maybe we can say uh, bigger. All right, it grows very rapidly, um, and as um, oops, as x gets big and negative, uh, 
f of x gets close to 0, right? Uh, so we have this idea of an asymptote. Um, once we have the language of, of limits, we can, we can state this much more quickly and much more precisely what we mean here. Um, and for, for a between 0 and 1, it, it's just the opposite, right? Um, so for every, for every number between 0 and 1, its reciprocal is, is bigger than 1. And, and if you take the reciprocal of the base, you just reflect the graph across the y-axis. So you just get the behavior going in the opposite direction. Okay? Uh, what else can we say about exponential functions? Well, we have you know, the, the algebraic properties that we've seen um, previously as properties of exponents. So we know that f of x plus y is f of x times f of y, right? We know that uh, f of x times y is the same thing as f of x to the power y. And we know that f of minus x is 1 over f of x, um, which looks a little bit complicated when you put it in function notation, but these are just the familiar rules, right? That a to the x plus y is a to the x times a to the y. a to the x y is the same thing as a to the x to the y, and a to the minus x is 1 over a to the x. Okay. All right. Uh, so those are the basic properties of exponential functions. Okay. Um, going into calculus, the main the main things you need to be comfortable with for exponential functions is is this kind of basic knowledge of what the graph looks like. Right. The fact that there is this asymptotic behavior at one end and rapid growth at the other end. The fact that it's defined for all real numbers. And these algebraic properties, because certainly you'll, you'll find yourself working with these algebraic properties at various times. And you know, it, it, you can sometimes get yourself mixed up on these properties. So some people will, will get mixed up and they'll, they'll think that maybe this should be x times y, um, or, you know, or maybe they think that there should be a plus sign here. Uh, it's easy to get mixed up on some of these rules. Um, if you find yourself getting mixed up, you could always kind of come back and remind yourself, well, you know, if, if x and y are, are natural numbers, then this is just sort of repeated multiplication, and you can make sense of things that way, right, if you, if you find yourself stuck and you're not sure of the rules. Uh, but that's, that's mostly what you're, you're going to need to be comfortable with, is, is these algebraic properties and, and some good working knowledge of, of the graph. If you've got a handle on those, you should be okay as far as exponential functions go.